right. Hey, everyone. It's another uh, Big Daddy and Friends uh, show. And I happen to have one of my dearest friends, a mentor to me, Mr. Football. You know what? I, I put a checklist together, Ronnie, because I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything. You know, <laughs> even though I know it, I just want the, you know, the viewers and the listeners and the fans to know. So, Ronnie Lott played 14 seasons, four-time Super Bowl champion, NFL 75th anniversary all-time team. And you know what I got? <laughs> I got a Ronnie Lott autographed football with the 75 logo on it. So, I got that. Okay. I'm missing one other thing. I forgot. First team NFL 1980s all decades for once and for all, the one and only Mr. Ronnie Lott. How you doing, Ronnie? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I'm sitting here, you know, and I realize that it's great to be on the show with you. We had so many wonderful moments, but I don't have any mementos behind me. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, it tells you that we're in a in an environment where, you know, the world has changed and uh, the world has changed because of the of the virus and, and so many other, you know, situations. But, hey, man, this is great just sitting with you and it's great having a chance to chat with you. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, believe me, I, I, as much as I'm excited, I'm also honored because, you know, you tell people, hey, you got Ronnie Locke coming on your show. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, man, I got Ronnie's coming on and we're going to tell two or three funny stories and we're going to, we're going to elaborate. This is going to be different than like, you know, if you're doing a regular interview, you know, this is friends BSing and, and, you know, letting it rip. So it's not as strict or as uh, I'm not coordinated to do anything that some direct. Just coordinated. You're coordinated to be you. Yeah, that's right. I'm just being me. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but anyway, you know, listen, again, obviously I know the history and we've been friends for a very long time, so I know. But the thing I always want to get out to the uh, viewers and listeners is, you know, let's let's start from the beginning. So, and what I mean by that is after high school, you went to USC. You know, you, uh, you were an All-American there. And uh, tell us about that. You know, I think people hear so much about your 49er days but I, I think you should always go to the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, even though college isn't the beginning, but it's uh, what led you to go to the NFL. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, when I look back, and I look back at the first time I walked on the campus at USC, and um, I remember sitting there going, man, this is amazing. It was, and the reason it was amazing is that there were so many – so many great, you know, athletes. And, and, and there was this guy named Charlie White that was on the team. Um, there was this guy named Anthony Munoz, who I had competed against in high school, you know, but I didn't know him, but I competed against him. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, man, you're walking on to this team and you're trying to figure out, can you fit? <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you, you know, I, I ended up be, becoming friends with, with two guys, Dennis Smith and Eric Scoggins. And, and, and both of those guys I became friends with. And when I became friends with those guys, man, we would hang out and we would talk, but I didn't know anything about Santa Monica and I didn't know anything about Inglewood and they were both from, you know, <laughs> those areas. And, and here I am from this little town called Rialto out in the middle of nowhere. And um, I remember sitting there thinking, man, this is amazing. And, uh, and then all of a sudden you get out there and you're competing and you're trying to figure it out. And, and you're meeting all these incredible, you know, athletes and, and Dennis Thurman, who uh, was drafted at that time, playing for the Cowboys. I had a chance to meet him. And, and what you learn was you got to learn <laughs> what you learn was you got to learn. Yeah. And even though you're a great athlete, 
you have to learn. And the question I've always thought of was, how do I learn? And so, you know, that year was a really interesting year. I had two games that I actually started as a freshman and uh, the one game against Washington State, it felt like everything was moving so fast. I couldn't keep up with it. And so they, they, they took me out of the game. And then I played against UCLA and they uh, allowed me to, you know, get in, into the game. And I remember in that game that um, I made some really, really bad mistakes, especially during the last drive. I, uh, I, 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 they asked me to come in and cover the tight end and I went in and covered the tight end. I forgot to look at him. <laughs> And so, and so when I forgot to look at them, they said, and I, I blitzed the quarterback and, and they said, Hey man, we didn't want you to blitz the quarterback. And so the coach got really upset at me and told me I had to apologize to Willie Crawford, who was a strong safety, who was starting, who was an incredible strong safety. So I had to apologize to him and, and man, and, and that, that, that moment really, made me realize that man I got to go study and I got to I got to learn how to learn the game and um so that whole summer I I went out there I I covered you know imaginary people <laughs> and I would never take my eyes off of them and I just realized that I had to go out and really understand that every responsibility I got to be account accountable for each moment and so that's when you know I got a chance to play my uh my sophomore year and uh I got a chance to play and and uh I realized that man I'm never gonna I'm never gonna blow an assignment and uh I had to I had a lot of moments where I got beat but I wasn't gonna get beat because I blew an assignment and so it it, it became something that i I rallied around and something that became, you know, to me, very, very important. Well, you know, I've, uh, <laughs> and this is going to sound funny, but, you know, I've YouTube some of those games, you know, like I, I've watched and obviously there's been so many great names that have come out of USC. I mean, that's like a, a football factory, you know, it still is. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's great to see legacies being built. You know, that is really, yep. that's something like I've really cherished through a lot of years, you know, from watching player A to player Z and, you know, they go from A and then they work their way to B, C, D and then all the way down the line. And uh, it's just uh, everything that you've done is so admirable and uh, commendable so it's uh but you just I, said something i gotta tell you something man. you just said something there that's really interesting to me is that um you know if you go back and you look at the history of the safeties and the defensive backs that played at usc and uh you know you go back man you know to willie brown and and guys who play with the green bay packers and yeah and you can go back to, you know, guys like that. And then you can go back to, you know, guys that came out of there just before I got there, like Dennis Thurman. And, 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 and my point is that all of a sudden, man, there is a, there is a history of great defensive backs that have played uh, in the national football league that went to USC and, um, what I learned, just like, you know, you see Troy Palomala and, and, and you seeing, you know, the kid that's playing there right now, number 15, you know, Fama. And you, and so you see some of these kids that are playing and you realize that, man, there's a history and a standard that you got to live up to. And yeah, that's uh, Ronnie Lott. And so, <laughs> so, so what I, what I try to do is I try to put myself, you know, and I still believe this, man, you know, because of what Dennis taught me, Thurman, and all of the things that he helped me think about as I was playing football at USC and, and playing football in the pros and having guys like 
um, you know, Ray Rhodes and, 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 and George Seaford and Pete Carroll and, 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 you know, all of the coaches that you, you know, you, you end up, you know, being around, you know, and, and the thing that I realized that all those coaches, you know, the things that they teach you, the things you think about, the things that you see, the things that they tell you that you should anticipate, man, you know, I wish that I could tell all of that to a young, you know, Adams or a young Fitzpatrick and or uh, any of the, you know, the great defensive backs, a uh, young Peppers. And the reason you say that is that you want them to appreciate the game because when you appreciate all of the history, I met Mike Haynes when I was at SC, man, I remember sitting there going, man, that's Mike Haynes. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, man, that's, that dude is, that dude is awesome. And, and I said, man, can you teach me how to play, you know, you know, to play defensive back? And he goes, yeah, get lower. And I was like, well, <laughs> and, and, oh, and what he was telling me was, you know, that you got to, when you're backpedaling, you got to stay low and you, and, and, and my point that you, I had these moments where you would learn from all of these, you know, I learned from, you know, being around Jim Brown. I learned from being around a lot of people, man, that hey, Deacon Jones, when I was a kid, I met him and I was like, man, he goes, Hey, you know, try to be the best you can be. And even if it's a garbage man, I want you to be the best garbage man. And I just realized that, you know, meeting these people made you realize that, you know, you have a responsibility to listen and make sure you do what they tell you to do. So let me ask you this, Paul Krause or Ed Reed, who is the greatest safety after Ronnie Lott? Well, hey, look, (laughs) first of all, man, Paul Krause, and you think of his record and you think of the amount of interceptions that he, that he had phenomenal, phenomenal. I mean, just, and, and what I mean by phenomenal is that, you know, the things that he did at that position uh, and the defense that he was around, that was a phenomenal defense. You know, they had incredible, you know, uh, incredible line, they had great linebackers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just, they, they had it all. And, and he happens to be, you know, one of the guys that, was a part of that, but he was phenomenal because he roamed the field and did so many incredible things. But when you say Ed Reed, and I told Ed this, I said, hey man, look, you know what, dude, you, you, to me, you know, watching him play arguably the best offensive minded defensive player, meaning when when he got a chance to catch the ball he was scoring he was and and he constantly forced the offense by putting pressure on him knowing that anytime he could get an interception he was going to make him pay for it and make him pay by scoring so you know to me I've always felt like he's one of the you know one of the best ever and so yeah I would rank him a little bit higher just due to the fact that man his what he did in terms of you know putting points on the board you know now mm-hmm. the other <laughs> hey they're both bad they're yeah. both <laughs> both of them i would look both of them i would sit there and uh and i can tell you right now i'd, I'd buy some popcorn and love to watch both of them because i know how great both of both of both of them were and what they did and what what they did to make the game better. To me, that's the great thing about watching great athletes is you can see how they made the game better. So here's a question that uh, uh, I was thinking about. You obviously give out, you give out great advice and you've given me great advice throughout the years that we've known each other. What's the best advice that your dad ever gave you? Man, the best advice my dad ever gave me is you got to earn, you got to earn respect. 
And the thing that he would talk about, which I think is people don't, the only reason they come to your funeral is to pay their respects. And you think of all the great players in the National Football League, you know, we just lost Kevin Green. Kevin Green, I, I, you know, and I knew him pretty, I knew him well from Pittsburgh days. And, and he used to say to me, you know, I'm the real big daddy. And I used to say to him, oh, yeah, Kevin, you, you're, you are, man. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just Neil's friend, you know. So, uh, and, and, yeah, and, that was sad and may he rest in peace, you know. Exactly. And I think the thing that, that, that for me was his commitment to service, his commitment to that community. And, and when I think about his commitment to that community of, of all the armed forces and all the people that are in that world, that world was my world as well. My dad was in the service. And so, you know, that, honor of paying your respects or when you see that they fold up the flag and they present that flag at your funeral you know that people are there because they respect you for what you stand for not for not not for what you do but what you stand for and all the things so i think that um um that lesson to me i still know that i have a lot to continue to give to earn people's respect each and every day so now let's take our let's take the story a little bit further now you're off from, you leave usc you go to san francisco and you know i i'll i will i will admit this you know your rookie year when you guys won the super bowl and you beat dallas there to go to the super bowl i was like i hate that team <laughs> I hate them all. I was such a Dallas fan back then. I was like, I think I cried, man. I think I was like in tenth grade. I don't even know what it was, but I was like, man. But you guys were balling. I mean, like, I think what you made all pro as a rookie. Yeah, you know the. It's funny. Um, that that team and the guys on that team. Carlton Williamson and Eric Wright and Dwight Hicks in the secondary. Um, I think I think what made that team so special is that we were all balling for each other and like we were in college, like we were just balling and having a great time. The other thing that was really amazing is that, you know, all of a sudden you got this guy who I knew who I had to compete against who, like you, I didn't like this guy, man. He, he, played, <laughs> he was at Notre Dame, man. And that dude, yeah. and that dude, man, I used to sit there going, man. And I remember competing against him his senior year. And, and I, 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 and I realized, man, that dude is good. I was like, man, Joe is, Joe Montana is amazing. And, and, and the reason he was amazing was that, you start, the more you get to know him, I used to look at him, man. You know how Superman, when Superman is, you know, people are trying to figure out, is that a cape or not? And you're trying to figure out how how is he dressing? And you try to figure out, I used to look at him, man, across the room and I used to sit there going, man, let me let me check him out, man. What, what is, you know, and, and, and my point to you is that he was just one of the, and still is one of the great, great guys one of the guys that you know when you throw up the ball in life you want to play with him you want to be on his side you want to play with him because he's got your back you want to play with him because he's going to he's going to make sure that whatever you whatever you do he's going to find a way to to try to you know win win yeah. and, and 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 he had a way because of how his dad and his and his mom raised him that you know they taught him that you know what you can you can fit in with all of these people and by the way not only can you fit in but hey i want you to find a way to you know leave your mark and what i love was you know he learned early on man that i got to i got to compete 
I got to find a way to play with everybody and I got to find a way to get along with everybody. And, you know, he talks about when he would dunk on people and stuff. And, and so <laughs> you, you realize, man, that Joe had a little, you know, he had a little special something in him. Yeah. And, um, and he was just, you know, he, he, he was one of those guys that, that for me, you know, when you, when you look back that, you saw this guy kind of blossoming into great, not just, right? yeah, not to just a good quarterback, to a great quarterback, to an all time, to me, the all time best quarterback because of just the way that he could win games at the end that, that you just didn't see other, you, to this day, I still haven't seen quarterbacks that could come back and win games and 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 find a way to you know to 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 deal with all the pressure of the end of the game mm. and, and that's a hard thing man to be able to close it's like a, a closer in baseball being able to you know make make people sit down and make them go back to the bench. <laughs> yeah. and, and, that, and, and Joe just had a way of doing that. So four Super Bowls in San Francisco. I got a question. Did you ever go to Disneyland after you won the Super Bowl? Hey, man, the guy who went to Disneyland is the guy that I was just talking about. I know, I figured that, but I had to throw that in there. I was like, yeah, and I didn't get a chance to go to Disneyland now. Uh, the great thing that I, I love is that uh, I remember when Jerry, you know, was like, man, wait a minute, what about me? And the next year he ended up going to to Disneyland, but uh, to, to play with guys like that, that, that actually went to Disneyland for the reasons that they needed to go to Disneyland mm -hmm. was, 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 you know, it, it, it obviously special but no i didn't get i didn't get that ticket i didn't get that call <laughs> i didn't i didn't, I was i was hoping to get mickey you know or many yeah, i wanted, yeah. I wanted <laughs> to meet many but you know hey. but you know i'll tell you so so now now we'll talk when we first met we met in 1994 yep and uh you know, here I was, uh, I, w I did an interview with Jim Trotter a couple weeks ago, and he asked me, he goes, what's something, what's one thing that you learned from Ronnie Lott? And I told him, and he was, I had him on the ground laughing. I said, I learned two things. I learned how to be a great driver, and I learned that I should always have enough phone batteries for my phone. <laughs> and he goes, what does that mean? I go, well, I remember the time we went to Columbia, Missouri, you and I, for that car deal. And then you were like, hey, Big Daddy, I got to get to the airport because I got a meeting at the NFL PA or whatever you had. And I'm like, well, we ain't going <laughs> to, we're not going to make it. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. I remember I was, in, we were in that beat up rental car which I think I ran into the ground. Hey, man. We were, that oh, I remember. <laughs> we I, was, I was turning the lights on and get people to get out of the way. And, and like, we made your flight. And I'm like, man, I got to make mine. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make it because I got to bring this rental car back. So I said, you know what? I'm going to pull the old time move. I drive the rental car to my terminal and I see the baggage handler. I go, hey, man, come here. He goes, you did an LT. You did an LT. <laughs> yeah. He goes, you got bags? I go, no, no, I got this car. You got to bring it back. Here's 50 bucks. The guy goes, really? I go, yeah, just make sure. What about the receipt? They'll mail it to me. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, so I told Jim that story, and he was like, oh, my Lord, big daddy. He goes, really? I said, yeah, that was, that was an all-time highlight. All-time highlight. All-time highlight. You know, the great thing about the moments we had, and, and uh, you know, I was talking about Pete this morning, and I was telling, I was telling, you know, the guy, 
about Pete, and I was saying that when I first met him, man, and with the Jets, uh, what Pete Carroll talked about and the things that he did as a defensive coordinator and the things that he made me think about, I really enjoyed not only being there, but, you know, all the great guys that I was around and, you know, Hasty and, and B-Dub Washington yeah. and Aaron Glenn and, 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 you know, Mo Lou. You you've got Marvin Washington. You get Marvin Washington, Washington. <laughs> and, and, the, and the whole game, but be, but be, it was the way we communicated and the way Pete helped us communicate. And uh, I would, you know, so I still talk to those guys. I still talk to Hasty. still talk to, you know, Brian Washington, but it was all due to how Pete kind of managed and helped us figure out how to get along. And we had a good defense. We had a really good defense that year. Yeah, that was a good group, man. I, I you know, I missed those days. And obviously I, I had a lot of uh, special relationships there because, you know, one, this one, that one, and we won't get it. Hey, look, you had all those guys, man. The funny <laughs> thing is, you know, just sitting here thinking about Bill Pakel, you know, Bill was another guy that, man, I just had a lot of fun with, man, and really got a chance to enjoy. And, and uh, you know, and Kyle and Kyle Clifton. And, Kyle Clifton, yeah. Yeah, man, good group of guys, good group of guys, man. You know, and, and that place, I always tell people, that kind of leap, that helped me guide my direction because – I met so many guys like you there and everybody else. And, and then obviously everyone went different ways. And, you know, Pete Carroll, for instance, I, I had to deal with Pete when he was at USC. And, uh, and then, then he went, you know, and then I told, I was joking around with him one day. I said, Pete, you forgot where you came from, man. You forget when we used to play basketball at the Hofstra, uh, the, the, uh, the student building over there. Right, right. And he goes, ah, oh, man, I go and remember, I got you your first car deal and I pulled it up when you were playing basketball in the parking lot <laughs> with Mike Brown, who by the way, says hello. And yeah, uh, Mike Brown, and, great dude. Yeah. And I said, though, I said, you forgot about those days, huh, Pete? And he was like, Oh man. I was like, Hey, I'm just telling it the way I see it. Don't get, don't get all sensitive <laughs> on me, Pete. I said, yeah, now, I you know, think, he's big time now. So. Yeah. You know what though? I, I, I think that what's, interesting to me about how people grow and how they evolve is due to what they think about and how they perceive themselves and how they um, 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 find themselves in, in different, you know, walks of life. And, and uh, I think when I think of that walk of life that he's now on has been, you know, phenomenal due to the fact that He's got some phenomenal, you know, players and coaches and administrative people. And, and um, you know, I always thought to myself, man, I wonder what it would be like to be around that environment. You know, you know, you know, you see, uh, you know, Ken Norton there as a defensive coordinator. And, yeah. and there's some other coaches that I know there that that you know, just and, and, you know, you would like to just peek in the huddle one day and just kind of hang out with them and, and because it's there is something unique around when you see people winning you know just like last year with the 49ers when when they were winning and you saw you know John Lynch and you saw Shanahan and and you saw how they created this incredible huddle of di you know that was really dynamic and and um and so you know, you you look at those things, and you look at why they why they're able to do it, and and I I try to bring some of those things to some of the you know business ventures that I'm involved with, and you know some of it works, some of it doesn't. Yeah, well, we had a nice little thing going there with Saks Fifth Avenue. You know, that was uh, well, that was that was, an, that was a, an incredible relationship, and yeah. and you know this, they were. Uh, uh, so amenable and we had such a great time and the other thing that the standard that they had aligned with the standard of who we were mm -hmm. and um you know and so I, I i enjoyed that because i knew that they had you know 
a premium thought about who they were. And, and we had a chance to show that we could play and we could, you know, participate and, and, and their customers that would come to the Super Bowl and be around it was really uh, a winning opportunity because to be at, you know, to be there and to be at that environment and to be at the Super Bowl and to be able to, you know, talk about, you know, winning and talk about the games. Awesome. Those parties were good, man. They were uh... those parties were good. And by the way, man, I appreciate you setting those parties up and I appreciate <laughs> you being able to let me be, being able to let me be a part of it. Of course. You know what? That was a, that was a group that I, I picked the guys that I felt that were on that Saks Fifth Avenue level, like you just said, yep. um, because there were names that I would throw around and they were like, nah, eh, eh, eh. And, 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 you know, and then they were like doing background checks on people. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know they did that. <laughs> you know, like I didn't even know, but all right, whatever. And you know what? It was one of those things where we kept the group small, but it accomplished so much because we got the word out there and, you know, I know their sales went up and, you know, all that fun stuff. So we're revisiting another idea, which I'll tell you off the air, which will keep us looking <laughs> sharp for the next Super Bowls. I, I don't know about this year, but going forward. Well, so. I can tell you this, man, the Saks Fifth Avenue relationship and being with those guys, again, you know, what I love is um, the impeccable thoughts and ideas of how they drive the value for their customer. Mm -hmm. um, no different than Bill saying, hey, we have a standard and this standard of how we play, I want you guys to be able to understand that we do it a little bit different than anyone else. And I think that that standard that Bill would talk about is the same kind of principles that we would see with you know, with Saks, Saks Fifth Avenue and how they would, you know, basically bring in their customers to talk about, you know, what that meant to them. So yeah, very valuable. Yeah. So let me ask you this: uh, going forward, what give it? Give us an idea of some of your plans. What do you? What else are you working on? I, I know you got the car dealerships and. Uh, and I know that's a big hit. So, but you know, tell us something that no one knows. Well, enlighten us. Yeah, I think I think the one thing that I would tell you that no one knows is that you know I love trying to find ways to do something no one else has done, and I try to think about what what that what that could be. And and so you know, a lot of a lot of times, you got to use your imagination. You know, can you? find a way to build a platform where you have access to capital and being able to possibly buy a company and partnering and doing something extraordinary that it impacts not only you know your your team but it impacts the community and 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 it impacts the community because you're able to provide jobs and you're able to do a lot of different things so you know you never know the bigger question is, can you frame up the play? Can you frame up the opportunity? And can you frame it up where it makes sense? And sometimes you can find yourself, you know, looking at a business that some people, I, I have a, a lot of friends that have, that have done some incredible things with turnarounds. Uh, I, I sat on a board of a company where these guys did a remarkable job uh, Wes Eden is a, you know, is, is a friend and, and he, he, he's the owner of the Bucks. And, and, um, and I remember sitting there, you know, thinking that, wow, you can, you, you can actually take something and turn it around and build it and, and make it valuable. And, and so I, I, I've always looked at people in their, you know, in their thoughts and ideas and can you replicate that? Mm -hmm. You know, the hard part is, you know, it's hard to be it's hard to be Wes, and and it's hard to try to find a way to replicate that. And and the question is, you know, then the next best thing is, can you partner with them? Because <laughs> <you know, laughs> yeah. 
And so my point though, is that you got to find yourself uh, just like you do in sports, man. You got to find yourself relying on great talent and being able to partner and being able to get the right people in the huddle to execute the, uh, the opportunity. I'm doing two things like that right now. And uh, one I told you about, which was a, the mobile fueling. Yeah. That's, uh, that's something that just kind of came out of left field. Yep. Uh, it's taken on its own life and we're building it little by little and open, hopefully it will be a national brand. And uh, it is, uh, it is a minority owned company. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, they're hiring people left and right. And they're, you know, we have incredible women that are, are part of the company. Yep. And, uh, and those are the things, the same thought process to take it from A to Z and do it in a way that it's profitable, it's commendable. And it's also, uh, and we do a good job of giving back as well, you know, not forgetting where you came from. Cause I think that's the biggest thing for me, that's a big thing, you know? And then the other thing that I got involved with and it's, and uh, a dear friend, and you'll, you'll notice at the big daddy golf classic next June, which, uh, you know, you got to come back for that. That's our, uh, Big Daddy Golf Classic. I, I haven't. I, I don't think I've missed one. You haven't missed one. Yeah. So we have to get you back again this June. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're working with different groups. So uh, you know we're working with the Orthopedic Foundation, but I've also taken on a women's empowerment group. Okay. And that, yeah, and that group is called the Share Group, and you'll meet the CEO, and uh, her name is Angelica Steen Olson. She'll be a part of it. And uh, excuse me, that's a whole different world, obviously, than where I've come from. But I've learned to see what she and her group stand for and what they're trying to do and accomplish. And they're doing great things. And and we're just trying to, uh, you know, it it never hurts to mix men and women, you know. So uh, that'll be a whole different uh, different game uh, changer at the uh, golf outing this year. Yeah, I think the thing that you just pointed out is a really unique opportunity because, you know, clearly in my mind, if you think about what we're seeing right now in our country and you see, uh, you know, this, this, this thought of, of, of what Biden and Harris can do and, and, and then more importantly, you know, having a chance to meet her at one time in my life and, 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 and knowing what she did here in, in, in San Francisco and what she was able to do. And, and, and what I think is really ama- amazing to me is that uh, her continued pursuit of making sure that she is relevant to making it happen for all women. And so I think that that we're going to see a lot of people that are going to find themselves, um, you know, not only in her camp, but in a lot of people's camps where they're going to have an opportunity to partner and have an opportunity to, you know, collaborate and, and do some really you know, amazing things and, 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 and hats off to, you know, Biden and, 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 and Kamala Harris and what they've done, because, you know, it's just the beginning, but I think it's going to elevate the opportunity for a lot of people to see how outstanding she really is. Well, I, I've been told it's the he, she movement, you know, so it's, uh, and like I said, I'm learning, like you would say, learn. I'm learning about it, and uh, and we're forming a great partnership. And uh, as we can all relate, teammates, you know, right. you got right. teammates, and uh, and if the goal is to win, everyone on that team focuses, and and off we go. Let's you know, let's get in the end zone and score some points. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing that that that. Yeah, we got to score points, but the the thing that I also believe that when you think about playing with teammates, um, 
it's where do you fit and how do you fit and how do you you know do your job to fit and 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 can you find ways to you know not you don't have to run it you know there are going to be moments where she's going to have to you know and insert herself to say i got to do this and he's going to have to be able to say i'm comfortable allowing her and that's where the great leaders find a way to be able to balance and do those things to enhance each other because uh, it, it, it's due to trust. It's due to making sure that you know that you don't have to think about it. You, have, you don't have to worry about it. And it's also due to making sure that, you know, we're all checking in, we're all working to do something bigger than than ourselves, and when you think about doing something that's bigger than than yourself, you're willing to to basically you know run through a wall because you know that it's going to be greater for everyone else, and 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 so that to me is the value of what we're going to see here in the next three or four years. So I was saying. Remember this? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, I remember. I thought I had the Ronnie Lott, uh, you know, memorabilia collection here. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you. You had to go. Yeah, look, you had to go deep, deep in your. your <laughs> <laughs> no, in, not at in, all. In, I had it. I had it with arms. I with arms reach. Within arms reach. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there going because I know for a fact, man, that. Uh, as I have done, you know, I've, I've pulled out, you know, some of my memorabilia and you think about all the things and the people and the relationships. And uh, I just mentioned a lot of the teammates mm -hmm. that I have with the Jets, but uh, it's also the people that were, you know, a part of that group, you know, <laughs> and you know this, it was not just, you know, Pete, he had a great staff and, and he had, you know, some great coaches that were around. Ed Donatel was one of my favorites. And and and, and I just got a, a you know a picture from Ed, and and Ed is you know just another thoughtful, great individual who is a great coach and a a great communicator, and and um, I'm glad I had the good fortunes of you know you know working with him, and so yeah, there there are there are these moments well where you and, and, and all of us will find a new path to be able to collaborate, to be able to find ways to work with people and find ways to partner with, 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 with great leaders that are women. Mm -hmm. So Renny, uh, the one thing that we did not discuss and I'll, I'll, we'll, we got two points and then we'll be finished. The Ronnie Lott trophy, the impact award that has to be you know i it's one of these you know because it, it knowing the type of player that you are what you represent what you brought to the table besides some hellacious hits i mean uh you know it's i i i have to say i applaud you for that and i never had a chance to tell you that so i'm saying it now uh, that's such an honor yeah, it is. And, 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 and yet there's a lot to live up to. And John Hamilton, who started that, uh, who recognized that young people needed, you know, not only leaderships, leadership, but they needed people to model themselves. And when you think about modeling your, yourself, you think about the characteristics and you think about what people should stand for. And, and so I think that the lot award was really centered around trying to get young people to be able to think about giving of themselves and think about being philanthropic and think about finding ways to, um, you know, do something that, that can help society. And, 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 and when I look at, you know, some of our winners and what they've done and, and, and what they've accomplished is really phenomenal. And, 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 and phenomenal because they've been selfless and they've been um, 
committed to trying to find ways to make their team and their communities better. And, and what, what I think is really interesting, all of these guys that have won the award, when you look at their resume of what they did in college and what they were doing to help their teammates and what they were doing to help their communities, you can see why they're still doing it today. And, and so when you look at, you know, you know, JJ, or you look at any of the guys that, you know, you know, Wilkerson's and, the, and all these great athletes that have, you know, won the award. I mean, Jim Leonard, the, you know, the coach defensive coordinator at uh, Wisconsin, yeah. mm -hmm. Wisconsin and, 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 and all of these guys that have won it, um, have gone on to really enhance other people's lives. And, and, and what I love about that is that, uh, um, that responsibility still sticks in my mind that, you know, we have to kind of be, we have to be thoughtful as we think about coming out of this virus, we got to be thoughtful about what can we do? And, um, I've seen it, um, you know, I've seen, you know, my kids all march and my kids all decided. And I remember sitting there going, you know, it, watching them do the things that, that when I was a kid and watching what I saw as a kid growing up and going to the march, uh, Martin Luther King's march when we were young and, and being there and my mom and dad taking us there. And, and, and my point to you is that um, you got to do, you got to, you got to do the work. We, we all have to do the work. We all have to find ourselves getting a little dirty and find ourselves doing, you know, the hard work that, that a lot of people sometimes don't take the time to do. And so, yeah, the, the lot of award and what it stands for, it, it really stands for being able to highlight what these young men are committed to that's bigger than themselves and finding ways to give back to their communities and, and making sure that people see that we do have some incredible, great young people finding themselves sacrif sacrificing for other people. Lastly, I don't know if we'll be there, but who do you think is going to be in this year's Super Bowl? Wow, that's a you know it's a great story, great situation. Kansas City obviously is the one team that everybody is sitting there and saying, "Hey, can they repeat? Can they repeat?" They got a great quarterback, they got a great defense, they got some guys that I admire because of the way they just play the game. Um, on the other hand, you know, you got who's coming out of the N NFC, and and you got Green Bay. You got the Saints, you know, you, you, you have TB, the guy that's behind you, you know, uh, Brady. And, 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 and what I think about that team is that you think about the talent on that team. They got and, and they got some guys and they got some people that can find a way to, 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 to beat you and beat you in a way where they can beat you playing fast or they can beat you playing slow. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be to me, it's going to come down though. Like I've always said, and I really believe this, it's going to come down to the team that's able to get the turnovers the team that's able to find ways to execute in the fourth quarter. Um, you got to be able to, you know, especially if you're playing a team like Mahomes, you know, like my, you know, Mahomes in Kansas City, and you got to find a way to not give up the big plays. Um, so there are things that that you got to prevent people from not doing, and if you yeah. don't prevent them from not doing, uh, it, it 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 gives you a shot. So who am I going to? Who I mean, <laughs> I would say. You know, right now, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Kansas City, and 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 because the kids from Cal, and 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 he's a and he, you know, he's, I've been a big fan of his. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, Aaron Rodgers, and 
And, and so, you know, it's the, the, the tough part is now I'm sitting here when I say that you got Sean down there in yeah. New Orleans and, and you got, you know, uh, you got, you know, TB and you got a lot of people and, and, and all of those guys can win it. So it's going to be, I, I, I think that it's going to be a really interesting who can, who can win it. And, and then the other thing too, is that, you know, you never know, man, on, you know, you never know, on, yeah. on the, uh, uh, you know, somebody could get Kansas city and, and the reason they can get them is that, um, you know, everybody's beatable, man. Everybody can be beat. I mean, we got, you know, we had our best team, you know, we had our best team, our best record, and we got beat by Minnesota, you know, in the first game of the playoffs. And, and so it can happen, man. And, and so you can't ever take it for granted. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta always find yourself being hungry and being aggressive and uh, being ready for the moment. Well, on that note, um, let me say this, uh, Ronnie, I can't thank you enough for coming on and, uh, you know, it's always great catching up and, you know, to all our fans, our viewers and listeners, uh, this is one of the best people, one of the best football players, one of the best people on and off the field that I've had the great fortune of being friends with. So, uh, for next time, this is Big Daddy. Uh, Ronnie, I want to say thank you again. And to everyone out there, I'll see you guys real soon on Big Daddy and Friends. Take care. Big Daddy and Friends, baby. <laughs> <laughs>